Hey, it's Doodle Bud, and I'm super excited to get this process started. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time and share it with you, and that is making my own fountain pen. So I've been getting all my pens out and getting some ideas. You know, do I do I just keep it simple? Something like this pen here. This is a fully wind pen. Do I just make a basic cigar-shaped cap, body, section, slap in a nib and a converter, call it a day? If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, that's kind of not my style. Nothing wrong with that. I could do that, obviously. I could just even download something that I already found out there and print it. But that's not what I want to do. I want to look at some cool pens and think, what are some features that I like? And can I incorporate that into my pen? This was sent to me by Hex Pens. This is their DNA pen. And this is the same type of 3D printer I'll be using. It's a resin printer, photopolymer printer. They did some groovy stuff there with the ink chamber. Maybe I'll get some inspiration from there. The Lamy 2000, I claimed it's the best engineered pen. Definitely some neat stuff. I do have limitations with uh, how I'm making this, but got a cool clip snap cap. Can I do a snap cap on a 3D printed fountain pen? I don't know. The Visconti Homo sapien, absolutely love it. The, the bayonet sort of system, this hook loop system they got. Can I do that on 3D printing? This is the uh, Jinhao X159. Not, you know, I'm not overly impressed with the pen. It's decent for the price, but the big reason I got it was this number eight nib that's on here. So this is going to be sort of the center point of the pen I'm planning to design. So I'm just looking at all sorts of different things. This uh, Cross Peerless has these cool facets well they're kind of more like stripes do i put that into the pen this came to me from platypus pens this is 3d printed this is on like a filament style not the resin based he's done a wonderful job with these understanding the limits of the printer and and working that into his design as well so i got a lot of work ahead i mean i got lots of ideas but i got one massive problem no matter with what i come up with as far as the design goes and what i want my pen to look like and all the ideas I have to design it. I got to make this in some 3D modeling software, some CAD software, and then send that off to a printer so the darn thing can get made. And I have no clue how to do this. I got ideas, but I, it's it's got to be made. It's got to be drawn up. You have to design it. And so that's actually where today's sponsor comes in, Skillshare. Because let me let you in on a little secret. Just because you get the software, in this case, I'm using Fusion 360, doesn't mean there's anything here. It's just a blank canvas. This is how it starts. Nothing. Bunch of buttons. I don't know what these mean. I, I know how to draw stuff, but I'm, I'm so antiquated on I don't know any of this stuff. So I need to learn a new skill, hence Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community that connects people who have a creative desire, creative passion, things they want to work on with actual experts in their rightful creative fields. And so for me, I needed to learn Fusion 360. I went on there, found all the great courses, tons to choose from. One stuck out in particular from Austin Hartley's mechanical engineer, Canadian guy too. And I went through his suite. It's over four hours long, but it goes from installing the software all the way down to making parts. And he talked the lingo I was looking for. He was talking about thread tolerances. I watched this video three or four times, how to make parts fit. He got into some other things, designing proper clearances into your parts. So this was a great and efficient way for someone like myself who has a creative project they want to work on. They don't even know how to get started with the software. I got so much work to do. It was kind of overwhelming. So if you got something like that, jump on there, take a look, maybe think about joining, becoming a member. And for the first thousand people who use the link in the description, you will get the first month free. But enough for that for now, let's get back to the video and see where I'm at. And so here's the first just little basic, basic project I did to uh, play around with design, just a few ideas, and then also think about, well, how is this gonna work on the printer? What are the limitations? Are these faces gonna be wavy? I went a pretty thin wall here in a few spots. How's that gonna look? My logo that's recessed in there. What's the limitations and outcomes? Fresh off the printer earlier today, I'm curious to see how is this gonna look? I got some infill pattern I was playing with as well. How is that going to look through a pen? You know, if I have a feature inside for filling ink, how is that going to look? You know, what uh, dimensions does this hold? I'm checking my dimensions to see stability. Uh, features like this, you know, I put Robert Oster on one side. So this fits Robert Oster bottles. And then I got my logo. You know, am I going to fill this in with some type of epoxy and then sand it so the logo pops? I don't know. We got, uh, you know, some defects in here. 
thin wall, like I mentioned, is that going to chip? What's the limits of the material? If it breaks, I got to know how thin I can go or how, how thick I have to be. So cool little thing. This is far from perfect. This is not even close to being a, a proper job, but I thought let's work with something like this and then I can just keep my ink bottles organized, pop them in there, holds them in kind of nice. My ink bottles are not very organized right now. So now you know, a little better than they were before. So that was a cool little initial project. I just followed along with when I did the online classes. But now I got to start with a blank canvas. So now I know some of the basic commands. There's going to be a ton of learning I got to do. Um, but now let's start putting some of those ideas together. What I'm going to do now is kind of write out some of the features I think I want to try to pull off on this first go. So the first thing I'm thinking about is the capping mechanism. You know, doing threads on a 3D printed pen, if I want to do threads like this, it's going to be a bit tricky. You got to go fairly thick. That's why they have the thread profile that they do on here as well. And uh, nothing wrong with that at all. But I thought, let's just, uh, let's try something a little bit different. This pen works very well. It seals as well, but I, it would be cool to do this, what they do on the Visconti, have this hook loop system. But if I look inside the Visconti here, let me turn the flash on. So there is this inner cap and that slides up and down. Grabbing one of the kids uh, Halloween pencils here, but that, like I said, slides up and down. So if I put it on the edge, you can see it goes in and out. And that, what that does is it goes against this edge face here. They get together and then that provides a seal, but then that's also the spring feel that you get when it's going in there, you got to have tension. So this stays in there nice and secure. So how am I going to do a hook loop system? Doing that profile is very easy. I can draw that in, no problem. I'll do something kind of similar a little bit. Got some ideas already. And then there's just a few notches. But uh, how am I going to make this thing floating? How am I going to make the camera focus? There are the notches. So that's very easy to do. I know how to draw that up already now from doing those classes. But I got to make this thing floating. So I'm going to have to have the overall cap. Then there's going to be have to be some type of cap liner insert that slides up and down. There'll have to be a retaining ring. So when you put it in, I got to assemble it. Now that's going to be an assembly so that it's all going to go together one piece. And I'm going to have to slide that inner cap in, but there'll have to be some type of groove, some type of feature so it doesn't come flying back out. Okay. But I got some ideas. I, th I can 3D print you can do whatever you want. So I'm going to have a, essentially a 3D printed spring at the top, all attached to that inner cap liner. I can put the groove in there and I'm going to give that a try. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to at least do for the capping mechanism. Now, the big important part is the nib, the ink delivery and the nib. So I think for this, uh, like I said before, when I got this pen, I'm going to use this nib and feed that's in here. Let me take this out and clean it so I don't get all dirty. Okay, we're all cleaned up so we can get a better look now. So this is the nib with the feed and the housing. And as you can see here, we got some threads. So now I got a question I got to think about. Do I, you know, use these existing threads? I got to measure them up. Good thing I got my microscope system. I'm going to measure these up and check everything out. Do I use that in the feed, the, sorry, the, uh, the grip section of the pen I'm going to design so it screws in like it does on here? Or do I pop it out of the housing and then just go for a friction fit? Do I make my own section and then just have it slip in there and do a friction fit? Now, the challenge with that also with this, you got to start to think, well, I want the pen body material to be springy, to flex. Well, it's, it's, it's a hard resin. But now I have to start thinking about material as well. Do I go with a nice clear resin so I get something kind of glossy and shiny like this that looks sort of cool? This is like a smoky gray style. Or do I go with a solid one? Do I mix and match? So that's another big thing I got to think about. And uh, to be honest right now, I, don't, I think I'm going to have to do both. I'm going to see what, what the threading will be like on a section. It would be nice to do this. I know this goes together nicely and uh, you know this isn't going to crack from this going in and out. I might crack it if I 3D print it, but nonetheless, it's something I'm going to have to try. So we got the capping system. I'm going to figure this out and then the type of resin. There's going to be lots of testing to do there. Then it's filling system. Do I do something trippy like this? 
I mean, that's pretty cool. I can do whatever shape I want, really. Do I just use the standard converter that comes with this nib and feed unit? So, you know, when you design it, this is really how everything is centered around. I'm, so, I, again, I'm going to have to draw these up for, for sizing so I know what my limitations are. This is essentially going to be the heart of the pen. Everything is going to get designed around this to fit it. So, do I keep it this way or do I get rid of this and then do something cool like they've done here on the hex pen? Or do I try something different? Do I get crazy ambitious and make my own piston filler or vac filler? I think I'm going to keep it simple. It's either going to be use this for, again, this is for first rendition. I, I want to get kind of crazy with this as time goes on, but I think for first rendition, I'm going to start with this. If I don't like how everything's going to go together, if I'm not feeling great about that, then I will go to like an eyedropper method and then you can make it kind of cool. This, this wouldn't be too nuts to do. That's just a little bit of extra work and design phase. But uh, I'm going to give this a try for now. Just keep this all as one. So cartridge converter style pen. And then if I want to play a little bit more, I'll go to this and keep the crazy stuff for down the road, you know, version two or three. So we're making some progress. Next after that is just going to be overall dimensions. You know, do I really like the, the size of a Lamy 2000? Do I, do I go for some type of crazy pocket pen out of the gate? Or do I go, you know, this is quite large. This is something big. I love my Mont Blanc 149. Do I keep it that size or go even bigger? Um, so I, I, I'm going to have to do a little bit big. So doing a small pen with the setup I have, at least for now, until I learn about the limitations, I'm going to put that to the side. I don't want to push it too, too much. So I'll stick with something. That I sort of get why they're doing it the size they did just to ensure wall thickness and a little bit of rigidity it's not going to crack or a chip at the edges too uh, too quick there's some there's some meat on the bone there to keep everything together so you know somewhere around that size or Mont Blanc 149 general dimensions as far as as length and girth I'm going to have to you know make everything fit but I think this overall size I'm going to be happy with that. So this this is at least some reference dimensions. I'm not going to do what they did there with Jin Howe and just copy it. It's just, okay, I like the, the size and feel of this pen. Mine will look completely different, but uh, I'm getting some ideas. So I got some idea on size, but then it's shape. Now, this was one that was given to me by Maya Furlong because she knows I love the OMAS 360, and this is... You know, something that's uh, got some type of similarities as, as far as that triangular shape. And this is actually what kind of got me started on the whole thing of, damn it, let's do this. Let's do a 3D printed fountain pen. This is a snap cap. Um, I don't know if that's going to work with my resin that particular method. So this was just giving me ideas. These are made completely different. This is not 3D printed at all. But do I want to do this triangular shape? It feels quite comfortable. One thing I noticed when I put it down, it, it's rounded, so it, it wiggles a little bit. That's, that's not bad, but do I maybe want to do it different? Instead of having these edges, as you can see, they curve out. Should I maybe make them curve in a little bit? But then that's some challenges because now I'm potentially having issues with wall thickness and, and could be more prone to chipping. So that's something I'm going to play with. Uh, I think for now, at least just the first go, I, I got a lot of learning to do on... Again, limitations of the device, the printer, and how the resin is going to behave. I think I'll do just a general shape, you know, whether it's square ends or rounded, but your classic, you know, standard pen shape. They all come in different sizes and, and exact dimensions, but overall, kind of a classic traditional pen shape, at least for now. And I think, you know, I'll level up and do that on the next go. This is one that I've really been thinking about is the whole roll stop situation. What do I do about it? Do I just have it be a pen that just rolls off? No big deal. I have several pens that do that. Not the end of the world. I know this one with Michael uh, Liu there from Platypus. He put some lead weight in there. <laughs> like the sticky thin stuff that you put in. I used to put that on my golf club to, to tweak my golf clubs back in the day. But yeah, that's a unique thing i don't think that's going to work for for mine because you're going to sort of be able to see into the pen and how he puts this together is quite different than the technique i'm going to be doing but uh i'm you know i'm thinking i'll have something some type of roll stop because i'm just hyper uh, worried about me putting it on my desk and it rolling off and smash there goes the pen i just finished printing and spending all that time and effort <laughs> into as well so i don't know if it's going to be maybe a hex shaped body 
or I'll have some type of feature I print in. Do I actually print in a functional clip? Now it, it's, you know, man, that'd be so nice. These spring clips, like man, on this Lamy 2000, I talk about this pen all the time, but it's so nice. You can just go to the clip and press back and just do that same thing with the Fabric Castell Emotion here. Um, they even got the thumb thing. If my foot camera can focus, right? You just push there and have that pivot point. Now, I'm not going to be having all those internal mechanical parts, but if I design it right, I can have it so it just it just kind of deflects instead of it being a proper mechanical motion like that. The material will just have a little bit of flex to it and could f actually be a functioning clip. And for that, I was looking at this little El Cheapo zebra pen that you can pick up at Staples or all sorts of places. So you can see it's all one piece. Again, this is all injection molded, but it goes into this. I could 3D print that, design that into the body and, you know, just have it so it flexes and deflects a little bit. You can have a little detent like that. So it's going to clamp when you put it in on that notebook or shirt pocket, whatever you do. So if I get the right material, as I talked about up here, uh, it's all fuzzy, but uh, if I get the right material, I can then maybe, you know, take that to my advantage and have it be a little bit flexible enough so we can maybe have a functioning clip on my 3D printed fountain pen. Another question I'm thinking of, posting. Am I going to have the pen, have the cap be postable? Because this Mahjong P136, man, I think they did a fantastic job. But that to me is just such a fail. Like you got to jam it on there, but then it's not even right. And you, you, as soon as the second you put it in your hand, there's any pressure. It's, it's, you know, it's coming off, it's wiggling. So yeah, that, that to me is really unfortunate. Just how this thing doesn't post very well at all. Um, you got to just reef it on there and I worry about something cracking. So should I make my pen postable? Well, if again, counterpoint is if you make it the right size, then it's plenty big and you just, you don't need to post it whatsoever. So that one, I'm going to put a little bit of a question mark. You know, I don't know. It's going to be all come down to the design. I am a little bit worried with posting. This material is quite strong, depending on what uh, resin I go for. It might not be an issue, but the regular stuff is quite brittle. If I go to post it, that could mean cracking in the body or the cap. I guess you could say I got uh, some serious homework to do here. Um, so I've been, you know, playing around with Fusion and taking those classes there on the Skillshare. And the more I do, the more I learn. <laughs> There's so much more I need to learn. This is going to be a long process. Uh, you know, don't worry. This isn't going to all of a sudden transform. I just only do design videos. I'm going to be kind of sprinkling them as I go through. I got some cool stuff to review and things I'm working on. I got some vintage pens I got to restore, nips to grind, all the regular stuff I do. But uh, I'll be kind of going through these videos here and there, you know, giving you updates, things I figured out, challenges I'm having. If I make some uh, decisions and changes on my design and overall stuff like that, I'll, I'm going to let you know. But uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this. And again, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you haven't. Stay tuned and we'll catch you next time.